This is funny. Ron DeSantis is begging Kamala Harris to come down or to talk to him and set the record straight about how he feels about slavery and the claims that it benefited the slaves to be slaves because it gave them work experience. This is pretty hilarious. He's pathetic. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is now calling on Vice President Kamala Harris to come down to the Sunshine State to, quote, set the record straight on his plan for black history standards, which suggests enslaved people benefited from the skills they were forced to use. Harris hitting back on this policy and DeSantis last night to ABC News. There are so-called leaders, extremists, who are attempting to, to require in our nation an unnecessary debate with the intention, I believe, to try and divide us as Americans. Stop. Stop. Let's bring in NBC News. I mean, if you honestly believe that slavery was beneficial to black people, then why aren't you allowing yourself to be a slave in order to gain those same benefits? It's pretty wild how racist white people will make all these claims about slavery and how it was good, but don't want to be slaves themselves. New senior national politics reporter Jonathan Allen, former Democratic Congresswoman from Maryland, Donna Edwards, and Republican strategist Susan Del Percio. Congresswoman Edwards, Vice President Harris is traveling to Orlando today. Do you think she will engage in this debate in that visit? Well, she doesn't have to engage in a debate, but she does have to set the record straight and make the distinction that Ron DeSantis is really out of touch with where the majority of Americans are. And I think that she's right. DeSantis is intentionally trying to divide uh, in order to shore up his uh, street cred with, uh, with his base. And unfortunately, that alienates the majority of the American people. And so I think it's important for the vice president and for um, the president. I, I mean, being a Republican already alienates a lot of the Americans since they're not, you know, Republicans themselves. Majority of the United States is Democrat. President, but to draw these distinctions with the, the um, what seems to be the mainstay of the Republican Party at least in the form of Ron, Ron DeSantis. And I think that will serve them well in a general election with an electorate that just really isn't going to tolerate this idea that in Tim Scott's words, there's some silver lining to slavery. DeSantis is trying to make this a fight against the vice president or a fight between Republicans and Democrats, but he's ignoring the fact that his own party is criticizing this black history curriculum. Take a listen. DeSantis started this fire with the bill that he signed, and now he doesn't want to take responsibility for whatever is done um, in the aftermath of it. Obviously, we should be teaching kids about the awful legacy of slavery. We can all agree that there was no, there were no positives that came out of slavery. He just should come out and say no positives came out of slavery. What slavery was was really about separating families, about mutilating humans, and even raping their wives. It was just devastating. So I would hope that every person in our country, and certainly running for president, would appreciate that. No. Wow, it's hilarious. Republicans actually coming out against slavery when majority of these people would re-enslave black people the instant they were given the A-OK -okay that they could. Pretty wild. But a lot of the uh, these uh, Republicans that are running for president, they know that the claims that they want slavery back is not the best thing to say, uh, especially, you know, right out in the open. So that's just why they're against what Ron DeSantis says when they are secretly for it. Susan, I don't get it. What is DeSantis doing defending a curriculum that teaches that there are beneficial aspects of being a slave? I don't get it either, but perhaps it explains his poll numbers. It explains why you cannot go that extreme to the right. And, you know, it's interesting because DeSantis is... Yeah, you can only go 
so extreme, but if you go too far, right-wingers don't like it. It They're okay with Trump saying he could murder a bunch of people, but they're not okay when Ron DeSantis says slavery had their benefits. Pretty wild on what, you know, right-wingers considered to be too extreme first position when called out on this, he kind of like stepped away from it saying, well, I don't know exactly what that was. And then he leaned into it. He made an active decision instead of at that point in time saying, you know what, this is wrong. I will go and fix it. It's happening in my state. He decided to lean in and thought it would be a good argument to have which just tells me no amount of resetting, rebooting, or retooling is going to help Ron DeSantis's campaign. Jonathan, in fact, you have this new reporting on potential problems for DeSantis in New Hampshire, writing about an event that had very low turnout, and I quote it here. For $1, New Hampshire voters were invited to drink beer with Florida Governor Ron DeSantis on Saturday in Concord, but barely more than two dozen people showed up. Wow. He couldn't even get people to show up with uh, cheap beer. That is pretty hilarious, and it shows how pathetic this dude is. John, what's going on here? Is he just not the kind of guy people want to have a beer with? <laughs> Maybe they should have offered something harder, Ron. <laughs> I don't know. No. Maybe uh, Ron DeSantis should steal some, you know, classified documents. He'd probably get some clout that way, just like Trump. A beer would do the trick. Maybe, maybe a half a bottle of liquor or something. I, I think what happened here, uh, and what we saw in the reporting of that story, was that the tickets were originally fifty dollars. They were slashed to a dollar, which is basically a nominal fee, effectively meant to be free. About two dozen people showed up last night. DeSantis was at a house party. I'm told uh, about thirty-five people showed up to that. Uh, so he spent four days in New Hampshire. He had a couple of good events with slightly larger crowds, but maybe maybe met two or three hundred people over the course of four days, which is really wasted campaign time at this point in a uh, in a presidential primary. I'd also say this comes on the back end of a two day bus tour of Iowa, uh, where we saw uh, images and uh, recordings of DeSantis struggling to talk with voters uh, to connect with them, asking a child at one point about the sugar content of his uh, icy. And in fact, Susan, uh, his his turnout is going down. It's not going up as he's supposed to be having this reset. What do you think is DeSantis's main problem? Why is he not connecting? Well, I think you could look at that event in New Hampshire and say, well, his event fell flat. And you know, maybe the beer was too. But the, the problem with DeSantis <laughs> is that his campaign is based on a, a bad premise, which is, I'll be there, I'm a better Trump, tr I'm Trumpier than Trump, I'll be there if Trump falls. Well, people are happy with Donald Trump within the Republican Party. They don't need to turn to Ron DeSantis. As a matter of fact, I think it's looking more and more likely that Ron DeSantis is not just going to stay 30 points behind Donald Trump, but he's looking at a probably a likely third or fourth place in the polls pretty darn soon, probably coming after Tim Scott. We're getting more from this NYT Siena poll today, which shows a head-to-head -head matchup between Joe Biden and Donald Trump is now an even split. Both candidates with 43 percent in that New York Times Siena poll. Congresswoman Edwards, is that concerning for Democrats? Well, I think not at this stage. I think um, one of the things that you have to look at in this poll as well is uh, where independents are. Independents are probably going to decide this race. And I know that that gap has closed as well as demonstrated by, uh, by the poll. But I would say um, the president going around the country making his case on an economy that is getting increasingly better, people will be able to attribute that to their personal economy. And I think that that is going to make the difference in this race. But really, is it not concerning when you look deeper in this poll when 65 percent of Americans say the U.S. is on the wrong track? And that cuts across all groups, men and women, all ages, different races, both college and non-educated, et cetera? Well, again, I, I look, I think that um, it's important for Democrats and for the president to pay attention to that and to stay focused on getting their message out across the country. And I think particularly around the economy, I think some of these polls actually lag 
um, in terms of the way people will begin to feel um, the economic numbers that we've seen with low unemployment, um, uh, lowering um, uh, int uh, interest rates, sort of staying flatline um, to help the economy, and also uh, inflation coming down, that those things are things that people will begin to, uh, to feel. And then they will know that they have a choice between a Donald Trump, uh, potentially, and a Joe Biden. And I think they still fall on the side of Joe Biden.